you're like, oh, we're having such a great time here <laughs> in person. In person. All of you should be here in person too. Hello, welcome everyone. Mm -hmm. um, we haven't shared it yet. So. But you can see us. Okay, Perfect. Cool. Um, hello. Now you can see. We will kick off um, social media form right now. Thank you everyone who's here and on Zoom. Um, for those who don't know, my name is Natalie. I'm in the library. And my name is Kenny Newville, and I'm with Modern with the Colton's here. Hi, Colton. Look at that. Colton just got engaged. Yay, I heard it had something to do with Chamber Social Media Forum. <laughs> no, nothing. <laughs> um, so today we're going to talk about, so we're kind of trying a new thing this year where every other month we're going to do some kind of like case study. Um, so this month we're talking about social media blunders. Um, so times when people really screwed up on social media and what we can learn from it. Um, and so next month will be more of the traditional way and we'll just kind of do every other month as long as we can find case study things for people for us to talk about. Um, so before we do that, let's go around and we'll introduce ourselves. So your name, your business, or your, who you're with. And if you want it to snow or you don't want it to snow this week. Yeah, team oh. snow or team no snow. Oh. Um, and, and real quick, for those of you that are online, if you wouldn't mind, uh, letting us know in the chat. I'm going to have the furthest person in the room from the microphone go first. And you just let us know if you can hear Susan. Yes. Everyone can hear me though. I am a very bad talk. All right. Well, the person who needs no introductions, go ahead and do the introductions. So, Susan, you will be describing. Yeah, please. Okay. Um, I'm Susan Yogati with the Chamber. And if I wanted to snow, no, because we have Chamber Connections tomorrow, third Thursday, 4 to 5 30 at Big Whiskey's. Sponsored by Mid Missouri Referral Alliance. So we want everybody to be able to come and network, bring business cards, um, and visit with big whiskeys and Mid Missouri Referral Alliance. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Okay. Let's just go ahead and go this way and we'll come back around. Okay. Hello, I'm Miss Nancy. I'm not sorry. No, but I'm really happy to have a question not to talk about your Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have to talk about Team Team Designs and Team No Snow. My name is Austin. We're talking about when I don't want it to snow because I have to take the grants in this weekend. I'm Joe Pellegrino with the All Stars Association and enthusiastic listeners. I love it. Ashley? Ashley's sitting with the paper and I. And absolutely no go on the snow too. I still have snow on my back deck from the last time. Yeah. There's like no snow in the world, so the deal's in my back deck. So I need snow sun. <laughs> right? You need, to, you need to finish your second snow I before you get your third. <laughs> <laughs> no ice for sure. Uh, Big Brown, LA, and Team Farmers Insurance, and Team No Snow. Colton Zirkel at the Conservation Federation of Missouri. And I wish we had 12 inches on the ground all winter, but not this weekend, so I'm trying. Let's say, thank you for me. Yeah. I'm Leslie Bickle, I'm talking here with Natalie. Um, I am team snow globe snow. I am fine if it falls and then just doesn't hit the ground. Like Amen. just just mm -hmm. big flakes, but doesn't. It's pretty good. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I would check that hashtag before you use it, but then you might want to incorporate it. Um, snow snow? Yeah, snow globe snow. Say that. No. Um, okay, so back up from Action Realtry, no snow. Lauren Carter from the center. Uh, I'm sorry, she's the center director of the Small Business Development Center. Also, no snow. Um, so let's go through uh, other people. Bryn, I don't know if you have a microphone, Bryn. Oh, hello. My name is Bryn Thorsten, and I am owner of The Backdrop downtown, and I am Team No Snow. Uh, okay, I have to remember. Uh, let's see. Linda Zimmerman in the extension. Snow is okay with her because she can work remotely. Let's make a difference. Um, okay, let's see. Jamie? Yeah, um, here I am. Here, good. Um, Jamie Meyer with RMI Business Finance. I think we could use just one more small snow, nothing major, just a little bit. Becca, did I read Becca's? 
Oh, I already read that. Okay. Um, well, there's a bunch that commented. We're going okay. off script. I am. <laughs> January in low, no snow. Michelle Babelsberger, no snow. Christy, no snow. Michaela, no snow. Laura, no snow. Michelle, no snow. That's everyone. Everyone's no snow. I love it. Um, okay. So normally I'd be team team snow, but I'm team no snow because I'm actually traveling. I'm going northwest this weekend, so I prefer not to drive through it. Same. I yeah, I'm going not with him separately driving because I don't want to snow either. Um, although the last snow, I was like, bring it on. Like Claudia came in, she's like, I hope we have a snow day. I was like, you're the boss, you can make that decision. <laughs> Call it. I guess snow day right now. Same yeah. thing. Close it down, shut it down, shut it down. <laughs> Um, I'm going to let you share. All right, All right we're going to go ahead and uh, start the screen share for presentation and uh, should be sharing now, assuming everything is uh, good to go there. And um, we'll go ahead and get started. We've got uh, really, this is, <laughs> if you come regularly, you know, this is already a pretty laid back presentation as it is very conversational. Uh, very welcoming. So if you've got uh, thoughts and ideas, feel free to, to share them. We do have the chat up uh, uh, for Zoom uh, participants. Um, but, uh, but today is going to be even a little bit more, um, uh, how do I say this, kind of just everywhere. Because we're just going to be throwing a bunch of examples at you guys about um, what not to do and how to avoid it. Um, it's, it, it is, there's a bit of structure to it. Um, and uh, but, but most of the time it's just going to be uh, just showing examples and, and, and having a laugh uh, because you can laugh at it. Because number one, it's over. Number two, it wasn't cute. Um, or anyone around us. Yeah, really. We try to pick things that weren't we, anywhere we local. Local. So if you manage pages, you're not here today. Yeah. <laughs> don't worry about that. Um, okay. So we're going to kind of go through, like Kenny said, we're going to talk about what happened um like what the topic is what happened and then what you can do differently to make sure it doesn't happen to you so uh the wrong access so the story here is this uh company hmv um had accounts set up by interns those interns then got promoted they were working for the company um and then they laid off like a ton of people, but they didn't remove access to all their social media sites before they laid off. So they just went to town from there. So you've got you've got uh, young professionals uh, who are already a little brazen, very comfortable on social media, who were, uh, you know, according to them, unpaid interns doing work illegally. Um, so in their mind, they're totally justified to take control of the social media platform and start posting away. Uh, this is just a, a version, a, a, a part of what was actually posted, but you kind of get the the, uh, the gist of the situation. And, and for, for the record, as you can see from the timestamps, it actually reads on the top. Um, but but you never know what you can get when you don't have control over your social accounts. Um, and that means, by the way, removing access from former employees or interns, anybody who has managed it in the past but no longer does, that's a good idea. Um, and then also, if you use contractors, always, when possible, maintain control and ownership of the account, whether it's through, for example, like on Facebook, you're in, your admin privilege and you give your contractor um, a different sort Editor. of privilege, whatever, yeah, whatever it is, whatever you're up to doing. Um, or for example, if you've got um, social medias that, that don't allow that type of fine tuning, what you can do is you can just manage that email address that it's signed up under. Um, I can't tell you the number of times that people lose um, their, their channels because they, they lost their email address. It was set up by a, a former employee. They discontinued the email address and now it's gone. Even like with the library, like I set up things all the time for the library and I always use the Merle at Merle.org email, not my email, because we want them to have access to it, whether I'm there or not. It's worth the extra money, whatever it is per year for your email provider to set up a marketing app and then your domain. Um, that's what I'd recommend doing. And then you maintain that password safely. That way, if you do have somebody that goes rogue or you have just a separate relationship where it's, it's fine, it's amicable, you still have control and can gain access to that platform. And always make sure that you have more than one person as an admin or an editor or whatever on your account. So like the library, 
Claudia and I are the admins. Claudia doesn't do anything on our Facebook page. It's just to make sure that more than one person has it. So. But when you do have, uh, <laughs> when you do have access to a Facebook page that you don't normally do anything with, it's still a great idea to double or triple check where you're posting things. And so we'll go ahead and show some, uh, some examples of people posting um, personal thoughts on uh, business uh, accounts. <laughs> this one kind of speaks for itself, really. Uh, yeah, okay, <laughs> don't do that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, this one was especially great because it was from Chrysler um, and they're complaining about how people don't know how to drive um, in Detroit, so. Uh, this is, uh, this one right here, <laughs> who, who, uh, raise your hand if you figured out what happened and what's wrong with this immediately. And you can raise your hand on Zoom as well. It, it did take me a minute. When I looked at the example, I was like, okay, hold on. Let's see what happened here. Did you find it, Susan? Oh. Oh. She just did. All right, so take a look at what happened here. So this is IHOP. This is the official, the official handle, Twitter handle of IHOP. And IHOP retweeted. Also, good morning to everyone except Americans who don't want to accept the simple fact that Hillary Clinton had a major garbage campaign. <laughs> so we had somebody who uh, was managing IHOP's handle retweet something that they thought was retweetable um, as IHOP. So um, you got to be careful with that. Uh, it's been it's become easier, in my opinion, uh, to both easier and more difficult to do this type of thing with um, with how Twitter has changed uh, how you log in. Back in the day, you used to have to log into your business handle and then log out and then log into your personal handle and then log out. And now you can switch accounts and be logged in multiple ways, but you always want to double check, triple check where you're posting and how you're engaging with your followers because they might be your business followers, not your personal followers. And I think this is especially true, obviously, if you are um, tweeting things that are controversial. Um, but even if it's not something that's, you know, like, obviously, we manage a lot of Facebook pages. And so making sure that when we're sharing something that it's to the correct audience, because something we share for one client might not be appropriate for another client. And it may not be something that's, like, shocking, um, but it, it's something that's just not the way you want to. And every once in a while, Facebook will do this thing where you, where it shows you the profile picture of another channel that you manage for a minute while it like loads in and it scares me to death oh, every yeah. time. But that's why you have to check. You always have to just watch. So. Right. I don't, I don't like to do this on my phone because um, it's kind of 50-50 in my talking <laughs> to somebody that's mining or it's mm -hmm. something. If I, I don't really have it like figured it out. So if I am responding to like comments, I use Business Suite or Creator Studio app. So if I, like if, and I'll, a lot of times I'll be browsing on the regular app. And then if I get a notification, I switch over to that other app to, to respond. Um, it's either Bus Business Suite or Creator Studio. Basically, I prefer Creator Studio, but. Um, yeah, basically an app that won't allow you to manipulate your personal page. Those are only for business pages or, or organizational pages. Um, but, but you're right. I mean, every once in a while you'll, you'll, you'll go hit reply and you'll type out a response and you'll post and you'll be like, oh, that was, um, that was not my business. That was me. Um, you know, so yeah, always double check. And we've got, uh, at least one more, uh, see, uh, just in case you wanted to see somebody on the other side of the political spectrum, uh, McDonald's did in fact tweet out, um, that, uh, Donald Trump is discussing the CISO president and, uh, apparently McDonald's was not loving it. Um, so that's real. Now, now, interestingly enough, by the way, both IHOP, and this is going to be a trend, this is going to be a trend, both IHOP and McDonald's, after this hit the fan, claimed that their accounts had been hacked. We all know that's not the case. But that's, nobody's that nobody's hacking the McDonald's response. to do that. Yeah. Um, it's always the response. So in other words, if this does happen to you, don't pull that tired excuse out. No one will believe it. And it won't really do anything for you. Um, take the hit, quite frankly. We'll talk about that here soon, too. Um, okay, so other things. Mishandled responses. So when things happen, um, they don't go the way that you want them to go, and you respond to it. 
This is like your favorite topic. So, so yeah, so <laughs> apparently this person decided to at Kmart and say that um, that it was crap they were opening for 41 hours straight. Um, this was Black Friday, right? This was, and if you look at the timestamp, again, 5th of November, 2013. Now that's an important time because at that time, it was not common for retailers to be open on Thanksgiving. This was still in the time of like midnight openings for retailers. So I say that because Kmart was getting flack for it, but that's kind of up until COVID, it was kind of a common thing for retailers to be open on new, at noon on Thanksgiving, right? Um, so even though Kmart did something that eventually became common practice, they were still taking flag for it back then. And what they decided to do is they said, you know, Kmart is staffing teams and they're doing it to give them the opportunity to make extra money, which is, yeah, maybe thing that's happening, but it's also because they didn't want to make money because they were a dying company and they were taking it extra flag credit. Um, the problem here was that it was a copy and pasted response that sidestepped the real issue at play here. Um, and copy and play pasted responses are never good. Nobody wants to nobody wants to see the same thing that you've responded to thirty other complaints with. It's just going to you know get you all roiled up. Well, and I think it's important. Like obviously, this is on Twitter. Like, had they just if had they just ignored it, ignored. nobody would have seen it because that's how Twitter works. Um, same like on Facebook, if somebody um, tags you or comments. Like it's when you have a crap response back that you're not, it's not thoughtful and, and really going at the issue that it brings more attention to it. So like a lot of times, like if we get a complaint from the library, I will like talk to Claudia and Claudia will call that person and they talk it out. And then a lot of times they delete it on their own. Um, I know you used that strategy when you were at Whaley's. So just trying to get in touch with that person offline and humanize it. Because a lot of times people will say things on social media and then when they're talking to you, they're not a jerk anymore because they're like, oh, it's a person. Like it's not just a brand. Yeah, Kmart, Kmart CEO was never gonna call Nugget fan for life. <laughs> but because our audience today is, is local and, and small to medium businesses with a more close knit community. I mean, that, that's the thing. If it's something like this, Honestly, it's best to ignore it, even if it's a deluge of poor response. And we'll get to that in foreshadow here. Oh, Tinder. So this is when it came out that you know, there was an article in a magazine about how the majority of people use Twinder, Twinder, Tinder just to hook up. Like that was which that, again, it was a big article. Kind of a, uh, yeah, right. This is a general really? thing. Um, so that was like, it was like in People or some magazine. And so um, Tinder came out and said, they're on Tinder to meet people for all kinds of reasons. Sure, some of them want to just hook up, but we know from our own survey data that it's actually a minority of Tinder users. I find that interesting because I want to know how many people are actually filling out a survey from Tinder saying, yes, I just wanted to hook up, right? One night stand, that's all I wanted. <laughs> so, so this is an example because even back then it was understood, well understood, but that's what Tinder's use was. There were other dating apps, and sure, did this eventually could something blossom to something more sure? But Tinder is where you went, um, and and so this is going off message. So not only are you addressing, by the way, it wasn't it wasn't a big publication that this article was written in. It was actually written in a, probably a medium to big uh, size publication. It wasn't getting a lot of traction. But Tinder people were like, oh my gosh, we've got to respond to this. We've got to do something about it. So they put this out. Well, here's the problem. Tinder actually had a greater following than the publication that posted the article. <laughs> so now what you've done is you've taken this thing that you really want to push back into a closet and you drug it out and just splayed it out on the floor for everyone to see. And so you're, you're going off message here, but you're also, you're also bringing something to light that most people probably were never going to pay attention to. So you've created a problem. Well, because just, I mean, know your brand, like know your brand, know your messaging. Um, that's what the brand is. That's what the brand is. Like, you know. I personally, I think that first tweet probably could have stood on its own if it was already a big thing that was going on, right? If they were already experiencing issues coming from multiple flanks, that first tweet was fine. But, but the fact that they weren't, they were making it a big issue and then they had to continue to explain it. Chances are, by the way, um, if you have to write a novel on Twitter or Facebook or whatever to explain and defend your position on something, you've already lost it. And also remembering that even when you take stuff down, 
screw tab look good. Like, Heck yeah. There was actually a, a picture later on in this presentation that Natalie couldn't find that about it pretty quick because it's the internet. And, and it was deleted <laughs> within like a minute, but it was gone. People get it. This is Kenny's favorite case study ever. It's also one that we've done an entire hour presentation on in the past. So I'm going to give you the short, short version. Um, Applebee's. Uh, basically, uh, a pastor and a large party go in to eat at an Applebee's. And when they get their ticket, they're given an automatic 18% gratuity charge onto the ticket. This is pretty common practice for everybody in America. Um, so the pastor decided to write, um, crossed out the gratuity, uh, rewrote the new total and wrote, I give God 10%. Why do you get 18%? And here's the thing, like, that's kind of a jerk comment. And then you realize it's, it's a pastor. And like, even, even like me, he's not particularly anti-religion. It's like, let's pass. I don't like this guy not, or girl. I don't know who it was. It was a pastor, but, but, uh, so a coworker of the, of the slighted waitress actually posted a picture of this receipt on Reddit. It blows up. By the way, this happens around dinner time. By the morning, it's gone off Reddit, onto Facebook, onto Twitter. Applebee's account is being berated by uh, up to, at one point in time, like hundreds of thousands of, of tweets and posts and comments a minute. Um, it was insane. Um, and what Applebee's decided to do was delete posts. Um, in addition to deleting posts, they decided to, again, write a response that explained that their customers' privacy had been violated. This response. That's they copied and pasted that everywhere they could, on Facebook, on Twitter, Here. all over the place. This is what they copied and There you go. On every single comment. Yeah. And again, nobody cares at this point. Now, here's the thing is it probably <laughs> could have not gotten to the hundred of, hundreds of thousands of, of tweets, posts, comments per minute if they wouldn't have done something like this, if they would have just stepped away, waited a few days for it to die down, and then see where it is and make a statement if you feel well, the need to. Even the next day, like they're in the middle, like some dude in the middle of the night, like on his laptop responding, like, there like were, just go to bed, bud. There were Reddit keyboard warriors. Well, it was a, it was a movement, but no, but I meant the employee, the Applebee's employee, yeah. who's still commenting, like the social media manager who was doing it all night long, just, just stop. Also, somehow the next day it became known that the waitress had actually been fired from her job because of this, even though she wasn't the one who had shared the, the picture. Um, so that created even more controversy. Um, again, that's the short version of an hour-long presentation going through about 10 to 12 hours of drama online. Um, there is probably that presentation somewhere in the Facebook group or Chamber Social Media Forum if you'd like to learn more about how not to handle something like this. Um, and before you believe, by the way, that you're shielded from this because of your location and the community we live in, uh, Natalie and I both um, were friendly with um, a chiropractor in Colombia that was a victim of an attack very similar to Applebee's where they had people from all over the world, hundreds going on and saying that they were abusing children because chiropractic care is witchcraft and they're, they're killing children and they're hurting them for life. And it was just like, just laundry list, Google reviews, Facebook, everywhere they had a presence. Um, so my point is, um, no, nobody from Australia who had told them that they were killing children had actually been to this chiropractic uh, clinic in Colombia. It doesn't keep them from piling on. Um, so my point is, you know, you have to watch out for this type of thing. And when it does happen, don't overreact and, and course correct too quickly. It's, just, it's always important to have, have a plan for um, when a, an emergency happens. Yeah. Um, okay. This one. So race together um, was a hashtag that, interestingly enough, was was created by Starbucks. So what Starbucks was trying to do here um, was say that they were expanding their locations into diverse neighborhoods um, because the idea was that a Starbucks would pop up in um, you know affluent white 
neighborhoods and, and shopping places. And so they, they had a campaign to put Starbucks in more diverse locations. And they created the hashtag race together. The problem is uh, people on, on social media decided to say, well, perhaps Starbucks, it's actually your locations that's creating gentrification in certain areas of our country, as it's saying right here. <laughs> um, so it, this is just one, this is a minor one. This isn't even like a super inflammatory one, but there were a lot of, um, a, a lot of negative posts. This created a lot of negative publicity and conversation about a topic that quite frankly, a coffee roaster is not qualified to, to say much about without creating a firestorm of some variety somewhere with somebody. So the takeaway here is just, if it's not in your wheelhouse, try to avoid, notice how I don't say don't, but try to avoid complicated political and social issues when you've got a limit of 140, 280 characters. Again, if you write a thesis in your Facebook feed, you're probably gonna lose. Um, or even, yeah. and just be aware that if you do go into those topics, be prepared for whatever may come. So, sure, sure. so just, just know how you're gonna respond and know that you have the information to respond. A good, a good really- Don't, don't really leave good. your lower level, entry level social media manager on their own. Like, yeah, that's uh, true. Good, good Lord, people, please, please do not <laughs> let that be. <laughs> So, if, you, if you've got marketers, do not put that on them. <laughs> that could ruin them for life. <laughs> um, but another another example of how people get uh, brands can get into the political sphere and and, and also cultural um, and and sensitive issues is Ben and Jerry's ice cream is, is notoriously um, anti conservative, anti Republican, anti Donald Trump. They're very open about it. It's, but but my point is they are facing a backlash from a portion of the United States. That's a, that's a thing they're willing to deal with. So my point is, if you're Ben and Jerry's and you're like, screw them, we don't want their money anyways. Okay, great, then you can go ahead and delve into this realm. But if you think that you can delve into the realm of, of the sensitive without losing people, and it's shocking to you, then you're, you're in for a rude awakening. That's the point, so. Um, okay, not knowing what, what you are posting. So this- Who can identify this picture? Bingo. Okay. So there was a brand that had somebody who was looking for images for 4th of July. And so they used this thinking it was like a right. fireworks right. type thing. Um, and then they put it up and everyone's was like, uh, no, dude, take that down. Um, it's the Challenger and it's explosion and all of that. So um, make sure when you are pulling images to put on your posts, uh, one that you have the right for, make sure that you know what you're posting. It's very important. So, yeah, that was pretty self explanatory. Yeah, um, yeah, well, and 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 a lot less disturbing is, is the next one. So, this was Delta, um, and they were congratulating Team USA. They had won in a soccer tournament, I don't know if it was a World Cup, I don't know exactly what it was. Um, so the yeah. score was two to one. So this is obviously America. Um, this is what they were saying was Ghana. Was it Ghana? Yeah, it was. It was the Oh, okay. Thanks. Um, giraffes don't live in Ghana, so it was just <laughs> like and people were like, "Hey, nice try, Delta." Like which, this. which again, in the world that we live in, the um, the the, work, the the best you're gonna look like here is just uneducated, and the worst you're gonna look like is. You know, you know that Ghana is in Africa, therefore giraffe, therefore there you go, and you're also painting with a rock brush all over the place. And so you can go down that road. But but my point is, yeah, you just gotta be careful. I mean, like, really, like you use one of the most iconic images of the United States, and then you just post it a random silhouette of a giraffe, like just be a little bit better about this thing. I'm sure Ghana has so many of those things. Like, could have taken a picture of I mean, just Google it. Like a lot yeah. of times that stuff will pop up. So <laughs> yeah. Um, so just doing your research. Uh, okay, didn't know what you're posting. So this one is a post from Wendy's. I can if you want to. Sure, go Okay, so Wendy's, uh, we talked about them a lot. Uh, they, they are the, the <laughs> resident flame lord of uh, Chamber Social Media Forum. We, we typically use them as uh, examples of, of how you can be brazen and fun with social media. Um, 
And, and this is an example of how it can actually backfire. So um, when he's posted, you know, our beef is way too cool to ever be frozen. Um, you know, this person says your beef is frozen, we all know it. Y'all know we laugh at your slogan. So then Wendy's goes after this guy. Well, when Wendy's goes after this guy, and by the way, this is this is the beginning of the of, of the the trend of Wendy's to be the plain lord of the internet. Okay. So this was before people were like, hey, Wendy's roast me, and then Wendy's roasts you, right? If people are asking for it, it is the best. If you ever are bored one afternoon, just take a look at Wendy's. Um, but uh, this basically turned into a massive conversation where everybody was piling in and having a good time and laughing. And, and uh, somebody eventually said, hey, Wendy's, got any memes? And Wendy's posts, Pepe with Wendy's attire. <laughs> so um, if you're unfamiliar with Pepe the Frog, he's usually green. Um, I guess it's a deactive. No, it's it's usually green, um, and it's usually um, it. Well, it's been co-opted by a group of individuals who um, usually are associated with, with racism, bigotry, um, and 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 bad things. But but on the internet, it is also used by people who are trying to just. Um, you know, really, there is no other term for this. I apologize, but but the term is shit post. It's to drum up um, emotions with people who you are engaging with, okay? So it's generally used for that purpose. However, maybe taking this very controversial cartoon character and then fashioning it, by the way, taking the time <laughs> to put a red wig on it, change the color, make it look like your mascot and post it on the internet is not the best time, uh, use of the time. It's a terrible strategy. It was actually deleted again it's estimated it stayed up for approximately one minute before it was actually removed. Uh, probably somebody saw them posting this behind their shoulder, over their shoulder, it was like, delete that now. Um, but somebody still got it, there it is. So, so uh, even Wendy's can, can go a line too far sometimes. Um, okay, so another one, don't promote your competitors. I feel like that's fairly common sense, but uh, British Airways, shared a Virgin Atlantic. They said there's never a better time to visit London. Book today with Virgin Atlantic and British Airways, which is also uh, shared it. So it was funny, later on, they actually went and edited the post because they started catching crap because people were like, why are you sharing um, this competitor? And they were like, well, you know, obviously we agree on one thing, just not the way to get there. Like, and they, so they changed it a little cheeky. Um, but I'm sure that whoever was, was like, oh, there's never been a better time to visit London to share. That's, that's easy content. Get, guarantee, guarantee you that, that, that this had something to do with automation, which we're going to be getting into here shortly, um, where you're right, uh, where it was like, oh, London, British Airways, retweet. <laughs> um, share. Yeah. So just, just paying attention when you're sharing things. Um, there's ways to kind of play off with your competitors um, in a fun way, but that this is not so much. Um, and okay, so these are all really funny to me too. So LG France um, was talking about these phones, and the the um, translation is <laughs> like, we don't need. This is when the iPhones they were talking about how they could bend. And it was like, oh, we don't need our our phones to bend because they already come naturally curved. And the best part is whoever posted it was using an iPhone. <laughs> Which if you're managing a specific platform like this, maybe you want to use your computer just always to make sure, unless you're rocking the gear. Yeah. Um, and then same thing here, Alicia Keys was um, a spokesperson for- Blackberry. Know, was it Blackberry? Blackberry, and this was um, the introductory, introductory tweet. Yeah, that she and, and still uh, okay. via Twitter for iPhone. So just just being aware. Of, I don't know how much of that happens now. Or does it still? I don't use yes. Twitter. It still says Twitter oh, for yeah. iPhone. Okay. Yeah, as a matter of fact, they expanded. Back in the day, it used to say via Twitter for iPhone, and and no no other mobile device would have it, or it would say via uh, Twitter mobile, right? But now it'll say you know Apple paid I think a lot of money probably to say Twitter for iPhone. And now you can even see, you know, sent from, you know, just like a text message, sent from my LG smartphone, sent from Blackberry. Uh, so it doesn't do that for like Facebook and Instagram and that kind of stuff. But if you are delving uh, into Twitter, just being aware of those kind of things. 
but there are um, different ways. Same thing too, though, if you're taking photos, like if you're doing flat lays, um, not taking photos of things that aren't on your brand or with your products. <laughs> Yeah, so this is uh, this is the CFO of Twitter, uh, who, um, as Kevin Rose points out, or Roos points out, um, Twitter CFO just uh, made the first ever merger and acquisition direct message fail. Um, if you can see that, uh, if you can see the top tweet, so the CFO says, I still think we should buy them. He is on your schedule for December 15th to 16th. We still need to sell him. I have a plan. Now, that was apparently yeah, supposed to go. Plan. Yeah. They never shared it. Or who, by the way, Twitter was supposed to buy. Never really heard that. <laughs> um, probably because they took his phone away um, after that. I would have. But uh, basically, he was supposed to direct message uh, a group of people at the time. Clearly, Twitter thought that using their own platform for internal communications was a sound business strategy. Um, and, and unfortunately, he tweeted it rather than direct messaging it. The, the, the key takeaway here is really, again, double and triple check what you're posting and to where and how is, is a good thing to do. Um, also, how is the VP of Twitter done on a blue check? That's CFO. How is the CFO now? He's just the CFO. <laughs> I mean, clearly he doesn't know how to use their platform. Sorry, but... CFOs. <laughs> probably doesn't care. He's probably like, why do I have to direct message my people this thing? Can't I just send them an email? Oh, yeah. So, um, so hashtag not guilty. I think probably the there are other high profile cases that, that would pop up in our minds when we think about this hashtag. However, at the time, this was actually um, the hashtag for uh, the Casey Anthony bird back in the day. Um, so who's hashtag not guilty about eating all the tasty treats they want? As a reminder, Casey Anthony was on trial accused of killing her daughter, Kaylee Anthony. Um, and she was, she was uh, uh, acquitted. So um, yeah. So always make sure that you are checking what tweets mean, not just trending tweet or trending, trending hashtags. And that goes on Instagram, um, even a little bit of Facebook now. Just if you're going to use a hashtag, just make sure you check it like what it is associated with. Yeah, that's always that's always a good that's always a good piece of advice. And 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 just because it's it's so specific to your brand or your name, uh the name of your company. Always do your research and, and see before you plan to use one that it's available. And by available, I mean it doesn't just pull up massive quantities of pork because, quite frankly, that's generally what happens to Twitter or racism or something you don't want your brand associated with. Basically, yeah. Uh, okay, uh, not monitoring automation. So obviously, there's a lot of automation options on social media, whether it's um, messaging, like if people message your page, you have an automatic report back. Um, scheduling, that kind of stuff. Um, this is one the New England Patriots uh, did. They put a tweet out that somebody there. tweeted them. Somebody tweeted them, um, and and they had a, a pretty a inflammatory handle. Um, there was a lot of racist overtones in the tweet, uh, and instead of being able to read through all of your acts and then selectively pick the ones you'd like to retweet and thank them for tweeting at you. They had an automated um, automation, uh, which, which allowed that tweet to be retweeted with a, thank you, uh, you know, we're so glad that you're a Patriots fan. <laughs> um, so yeah, automation is great, it can save time, but it can also literally bury you. So- And I um, think a lot of that, like I don't know how many local businesses have like that type of software that you're using, but- Maybe not for Twitter. But I would encourage I would encourage a lot of people who feel like they don't have time to be on Facebook Messenger all the time. Absolutely, create the automations for questions and answers. Um, you know, you can do that very easily if you if you're just one person running a business, or if you've got multiple things you're doing for the business, and this is just one of them. That's a perfect way to keep your your uh, reply um, rate, response rate high. Um, and, and quite frankly, take care of some low hanging fruit. What are your hours today? You really want to stop what you're doing and type that every time. Um, you just have to be careful that your automated rules um, work well. 
Uh, I kind of wish that we, that was a perfect segue into two slides from now. So put a pin in there. Um, here's another one. Oh, yeah, yeah congrats to, yeah. Okay. Um, sorry, I'm digging it. Not modern animation. So this is another, it's the same thing where they had it automatically retweeted or share things that were not. Yeah, it's a bad word under the red bar. Um, <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so yeah, just careful with that. Um, so this is a British grocery store. And at the time that they put this out, they were under fire for selling beef contaminated with horse meat. <laughs> and their automated response to anything that was at, first of all, there is no after hours, right? We've talked about that frequently in here. You know, Applebee's went to bed too and they woke up in the morning and it's like that meme where, you know, the door opens up and everything's on fire. And just like, what happened? You know, that's that's what happens. So, so there is no there is no after hours. Um, and, and so they, they have this. And I guess I don't even really consider that a British saying. I'm not even sure what they were trying to go for, man. But it definitely wasn't horse meat and beef controversy. It's like the one, and it's not in here, but we've talked about it before, where one of the cereal brands did the bowl with the Amazon. Cereal. Oh, it was Amazon. Their like featured product was a bowl, and it was a cereal killer. Yes, a cereal killer. Um, had, like, like spelled like the like cereal, like what you eat. Breakfast cereal. Uh, but it was it went live the morning of like a school shooting or something. The night before shooting before. Yeah. 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 Uh, just just keep it. It was a it was an Amazon ad that that went live basically, and people were screenshotting the news of the nightclub shooting, and right under it is sponsored post on Facebook. Of a cereal, a white cereal bowl with red, you know, blood splatter on the inside of the bowl, and it was cereal, it's called cereal killer. Yeah. So careful with automation; it will get you. Um, okay, so trying to call up a serious event. So this is when the Seattle Seahawks were going to the Super Bowl, and they used an MLK quote. Um, because comparing your your uh, you know your record that year. Uh, to a decades-long civil rights battle is totally the way you want to go. Uh, again, totally backfired. Um, you can imagine people who were uh, who were upset about it. So you know, it didn't even. I, I personally, I, I mean, there is a there is a very strong case with a lot of these for not pandering. You know, you don't need to get in on weigh in on everything. You don't need to shade everything. That you that your business does um, with the lens of the societal pressure points of the day, um, it would have been good enough to say, "Hey, we made it! Who's excited to go to the Super Bowl with us?" But instead, they decided to, you know, yeah. <laughs> post about somebody who's battling for their own rights. This one kills me. I don't know what they were thinking. Um, all impacted by Sandy, stay safe. We'll be doing lots of gas from shopping today. How about you? But I, I just, that's just poor, poor, like, I can't believe they put that in the same place. I think one of my favorite parts about this is like, so you, let's dissect this for a minute. All impacted by Sandy is who they're talking to. And they're recommending indirectly that they shop online rather than get out in, in the store. It's hurricane, right? Those people went without power. How the heck were they supposed to shop online? Uh, it's not even well thought out practically. Well, and I'm guessing like the mail wasn't running. So like their stuff couldn't be delivered. But, like it's yeah, so I mean, like, just like breaking it down. Like, yeah, okay. philosophically, it's a terrible idea. Practically, it's impossible. Shut up, yeah. Um, here's another one with Cairo. Um, there was anti-government protesters. Yeah, this was tweeted during the Arab, which is known as the Arab Spring, which was um, a ton of upheaval in the Middle East. Um, riots and, and protests against, um, um, you know, dictatorial governments. Um, and, and by the way, we're currently, uh, you know, we don't really know how far we are in, but we're currently in the Arab winter, where it's the fallout and the crackdown, violent crackdown, from these governments on these people demanding um, more rights and liberties. Um, we're still in it. So we haven't even gone out of it yet. And, and Kev calling the other one. Yeah. Because there are smooth print collections available online now. So just, you know, don't, don't do this stuff. Read the room. We do. And my favorite thing is that she's like, I know, 
I'm trying to read the room. I'm not doing a good job of it. So, so anyways, uh, like we said, this is, this is always going to be kind of a, a fun little exercise um, in what not to do and how not to do it. Um, you know, there are, there are millions of other examples out there. Um, maybe a, a fun exercise would be, you know, jump in the Facebook group and go ahead and, and, and share some of your own favorite blunders. Try to not be about local. Don't, let's not put anyone local on blast. But big check mark, blue check marks, and big brands are nationwide. They're fair game. Um, <laughs> it's a good opportunity to kind of see this, and even if there is a discussion around it, it, it helps you to remember in the future as you as you go to click post or send or what have you to always always double check uh, that what you're doing can't be um, you know twisted. Obviously, you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, so there are times where you post something today and it's fine, and tomorrow it's something different. Um, Amazon, you know, they didn't know they were scheduling a post that was going to be, uh, you know, um, so <laughs> morally bankrupt. But, um, well, but I mean, it happens. Always trying to look at your posts from multiple ways to see if there's a way that it could be construed differently than what you meant, and how can you adjust the wording or adjust the photo um, so it doesn't come across that way. Um, so it's just it's just always like thinking about that, and a lot of times, like I will Google stuff. Um, like, uh, what is it? Veterans Day and Memorial Day. And I feel like there's one other military specific holiday. Like I will always Google those because some people will be like, happy yeah. Memorial Day. Or, um, and, and there are veterans that get really upset about that because they're like, this is when people die. Like, it's not like a happy, like I know that's how we set like, barbecues and all of this stuff but like or going up and thanking a veteran for their service on memorial day again yeah. it's like oh yeah so don't be like thank you veterans on memorial day so like i just always on stuff like that i always try to google it um honestly from the library like i have quit doing like mother's day posts and father's day posts because inevitably somebody will get upset like i that we recognize one on that day and not the other or they'll say like what about the pet parents or what about the like, what about the moms or dads or the dads or mom? Like, and it just becomes a thing, and it's just easier in my mind. There's 17,000 other Happy Mother Day posts that day or Happy Father's Day posts, and I just I don't touch it anymore because it's just too much. There's actually a trending post right now um, from a lady in Australia who was who was who wrote an article praising her husband and all the all the the dads out there who are who are not shirking domestic responsibilities and are raising their children and doing everything that they can. And she wrote this article about how basically, um, you know, he, you know, he would take care of their kid in the middle of the night and then go to work and still do the dishes and the laundry. And she was so grateful that she was recovering from carrying the child and all this stuff. And it, it's like 75% just angry women getting really mad that men are, men are caring. <laughs> that's on Twitter right now. You go check it out. <laughs> so even like when you try to post something that, that could be, hey man, yeah, let's just stop for a moment and let's shift attention to this one thing for five seconds, you know, um, you could still get some negativity. So just so just you know, as a brand, you know, know how have a plan. We've talked about that um, with with other uh, in other presentations. You know, have a plan when something like this does happen and it goes wrong. What's your what's your strategy? Who is your quick dial, right? If you're managing social media for somebody that's higher up than you, who is your quick dial? Are they accessible? Do they allow you to make the decision to pull the post or edit the post or otherwise do something that you know could heal the problem but could also inflame a little more? Um, so you know, again, that that presentation is on, I believe, on Chamber Social Media Forums the group as well. So check that out. Um. Okay, any questions from anyone? Yeah. yeah. So last night I'm sitting at home and I got a message through our Facebook Messenger at CFM and it said, Warning, you posted something that disagrees about the community standards. You have 48 hours to respond or you shut the thing down. It looked pretty efficient. Mm -hmm. Um, and like last night, I was just like, right. 
brought me to a page that's like, okay, put your information here, let us know my like, description. We need to know all these things so we can back into your account to make sure you're good. Well, hmm. we had our affiliate that got their page entirely shut down for two weeks. And I thought this was something mm -hmm. like that. And they had just commented on a post on TikTok and they got kicked off. <laughs> and they never got an answer for that. that it wasn't that. Right. And so finally, like on Meta Business Messenger or whatever, uh, on the side, it's like you know, a foreign language on the profile. Or like yeah. So it's spam. So cool. like, it looked legit. Right. I didn't put any of my stuff in, but just a warning to everybody. Like, yeah. I mean, I oftentimes don't know how content, it's through, <laughs> you'll get a notification. And when you click on the notification, it'll take you to like their page. And there's like an inbox within that. But in my experience, if there's a post, first of all, if they're going to take any action against your page, you're guilty until proven innocent on social media. Doesn't matter what platform it is. Um, you know, again, using using a local person, um, you know, Austin Peterson on 950. Um, he he posted a picture. Uh, I think it was just yesterday where he had actually disputed uh, Facebook removing his post and won. And Facebook said, you know, they gave again the notifications. Is where it, it wasn't a messenger; it was in the notifications, and it said, you know, whoops! Exclamation mark! Our team has reevaluated this and shown that it doesn't violate our terms and conditions. It's back to good now. But I mean, it, they they take it down, like it's gone, and then you can you can um, you know argue. It wasn't like obviously anywhere else. Sure. Yeah. On I went through lots of other places looking. Right. For Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know Sweet Smoke has that problem. So Sweet Smoke will run contests and then people will message people who have commented on it to try to get them to give them their credit card information and all this stuff like so sweet smokes always like we will not contact you via messenger to award you like we will comment below we will post your name like we'll tag you like so yeah being diligent for sure <laughs> right i got too much time on our hands <laughs> all right anyone have anything else If you if your company decides to venture on the TikTok, always listen to the lyrics of the song before you post it. <laughs> That's what I'm for. True. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I've heard a few of those. I've seen a few. <laughs> uh, my favorite translation thing right now is with the Super Bowl. There's this meme going around that's like, "Oh, everyone in the Midwest." Eminem is saying, oh, it goes yeah. okay. And it's like, yes, he's from the Midwest. That's what it is. Like, Me too. I'm like, that's the lyrics. That, those are the, and that's, it's coming out yeah. now, like the list of lyrics. It's like, Marshall, Marshall Mathers moved to Detroit from St. Joe and then it became Eminem. So, yeah. but like, it just, and, and even up there, they, they, that phrase they say. So, it just, that's a funny thing to me right now. But everyone's like, oh, the people in the Midwest. And it's like, he is Midwest. Come on. What's the phrase? It's oh, everyone oh, thinks it's saying like this is in the Midwest, you know, we all go, oh, 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 like run into someone, you're like, oh, oh. Um, so everyone else says it's oh, and everyone's like, oh, oh. Yeah, the, the line is, the line is, oh, there goes gravity. <laughs> and apparently the rest of the world part is, oh, there goes gravity. <laughs> it's incorrect. I wouldn't delve too much farther into his earlier. I mean, lyrics. nope, that's, <laughs> those were okay for us to talk about. It's not the only line we can repeat about. So there you go. Okay, awesome. All right. Well, thank you everyone on Zoom. And we will see you guys next month. I don't know what the topic is yet. Cool. Maybe some suggestions. Go to the, the group page, post your suggestions. Yes.